Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the new version of OpenShot Video Editor version 2.1 and kind of giving a first impressions on it while looking through all the features. So the first thing I notice about the interface is that they've switched to a dark theme by default. I actually like that decision a lot, but that's more of a personal preference than anything. I've always liked dark themes, um, which is one reason I kind of like Adobe Premiere. So the switch to that is actually positive for me. I think it's a little bit easier on the eyes. So one of the things I, I did actually already check out, which is a really cool feature for them to be adding, is audio waveform support. If I right click on these clips and I go to separate audio, and let's say make it a single clip separated from that, what it's going to do is it's going to make an audio only layer down here. And once that's taken care of, which does take a second, it's actually going to show these audio levels, the um, basically how loud your audio is from that clip at any point in time. And I think that's a really important feature to have. It's one of the reasons I like KDE in live uh, when I'm running Windows, uh, I mean Linux, sorry. And it's one of the reasons I like Adobe Premiere's latest versions like Premiere CC Pro. So having that is nice because what would uh, what you can do with that is you're editing through your clips. You don't actually have to listen back to every single line. You can just see, oh, there's a gap here. So one of the features that they've added to this app is the ability to slice all. So in order to do this, we have to right click above our uh, tracks, go to slice all and choose an option. So we can do keep both sides, keep left side, keep right side. If you don't hit keep both sides, I imagine that means it removes everything to the right or removes everything to the left, respectively. So we're going to do keep both side. And I'll go ahead and get that cut. It does take a second, but I guess that's not too bad, all things considered. So another thing that they've changed is adding in improved property editing. I, I think it's more bringing it up to date. So what we have here are slider functions for different aspects of our clips. That's a good thing. I think sliders are very useful and easy to use. And when you have sliders for basically all of the different attributes, like the duration or whether or not you want audio, you can enable or disable that just by setting it to one or zero. Um, let's see, the location and position, those are kinds of things. Like if you maybe have multiple clips, you might want to shrink one clip on your screen. Uh, and have the other one full size. That's something I occasionally do. Uh, yeah, having sliding scales here, that's, uh, that's a nice improvement. Okay, and if you also have more than one clip selected, what you can do is there's a new drop down here. So you can switch between the different clips. Uh, obviously, that's a little less useful here because all the different clips are under the same name, so it would get confusing. But if you're bringing in different audio tracks or video tracks and they all have different names, then that's going to help you out here. Um, one thing I would say is it might be kind of helpful if when you have multiple clips with the same name, if it just added like a one, two, three, four at the end of it to kind of differentiate them, that would probably help here. And we've got the ability to add and use a configurable keyboard mappings. That's a useful thing. So let's go up to preferences and find that here. So keyboard options menu still kind of light, but that's fine. Open shot was always a pretty light video editor overall. And we have a bunch of different keys here. Actually, that's quite a lot of keys, all things considered, for a uh, feature that they just added. I think that's probably just about everything you could possibly want there. So good on them for adding hotkeys. Uh, they Hotkeys obviously make it quicker to do the work you need to do. So that's a definite plus there. So according to the blog for OpenShot, they claim that there are some new timeline improvements, including uh, snapping the moment you add something onto the timeline and the ability to lock a track. Let's actually try locking a track now. So that's a good thing. If I try to play around with it now, it's not going to do anything because I locked it. So yeah, good for that. That's a minor plus, but still a plus nonetheless. Uh, one thing I did notice uh, playing around with it a little bit is that you can actually create a transition really easily. Like if you just grab your video clip and put it over the other one, uh, that technically creates a fade here. Now, I might have actually done that to the audio track or something. Let, let me see here. Enable video, negative one. And down here we have enable audio, negative one. I'm not actually sure about that. I, I mean, this is supposed to be a... F this launch.exe thing does seem to be a problem, though. They've got to fix that. That's the second time it's crashed on me because of it. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and do a slice here on this clip. It does take a second. We'll remove this and we will add in another video so that we can do a test transition. So they do snap pretty easily from clip to clip and that's a good thing. Um, kind of how I was playing around with it earlier, if you just drag one clip over another clip, that theoretically creates a transition. So this should be a fade now. Let's go ahead and see if that works. So that might be the easiest transition I've ever had to make. But uh, the one problem here is that the rendering seems to be kind of slow. That's not a huge deal, um, given it's like a live preview. I do have to say, and uh, they do admit it on the blog, there does seem to be a few performance issues. I mean, my computer handles Adobe Premiere fairly well already, and that's probably about the most complicated video editor you can grab, or one of the most complicated ones. So if they can get that sorted out, that will be good in the future. Aside from that, the tutorial system is really just four quick pop-up windows saying, oh, well, here's the project files area, the video preview, the timeline. I guess it's enough for like an absolute beginner to kind of get a sense of every, where's everything. Um, probably doesn't honestly need to be much more than that, but it's sort of useless. So yeah, just to show, let's go ahead and walk through that. So project files are over here. Timelines over here, video previews over there, export your video when you're done, and that's it. And now the app is 64-bit, which probably isn't such a huge deal for most people. It's kind of just, yeah, whatever, it's a 64-bit app. Um, but what I'm more concerned about is those performance issues. So yeah, if they can knock out the launch EXE error that seems to be happening now on Windows... Um, and they can improve the performance of OpenShot, then I think OpenShot will actually be really good in the future. I'd say if you take away the performance issues, it's getting really comparable to something like KDE and Live uh, for Linux-based editors, but it's cool that this is on Windows as well. Not sure if KDE and Live is on Windows. Um, but yeah, as far as free video editors go, this might be one of the better ones out there on Windows. And I really do, once again, like the dark theme. That was a nice decision. And I like what the direction where this app is going. So that's pretty much it for my first impressions of OpenShot Video Editor 2.1. And my walkthrough of the new features that are in this release. So I've been Chris. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully I'll see you in my future content. Until then.